lads, welcome back to Fusion One Geo. Today is a sad day. Today is the day that we put to rest a few new cards to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden and Limited list. We're doing a funeral for them. They're going away for some of them, and some of them are just being kind of slapped on the wrist. So I've already seen the list, obviously. Uh, it's been out for two days, so I've I've seen it. We're going to dive right into the what happened, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to go through it. We're going to talk about what I think it's done in terms of competitive viability to certain decks. So starting off, we have uh, the Forbidden section, which is one fe uh, Fiendsmith Lacrima. Um, that, go that getting banned surprised me. I didn't expect Lacrima to go right away. However, them making it a common is kind of foretelling. Um, this doesn't, obviously, this doesn't affect the world's ban list, but it does change how the deck works functionally. I think the Fiendsmith package got relatively well nerfed with this hit uh, because they can't beat you in time so now they have to play more efficiently which is always a good thing uh, we've got Apollosa Bow of the Goddess I think the entire community knew this card was going away I don't think it's a surprise that it's gone uh, I don't think like this isn't this doesn't shock me whatsoever um, Apollosa going away just uh, stops insulation and makes Nibiru better which is always nice uh, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity I almost forgot this one in my prediction, but yes, this card being gone is always a good thing. Um, it just, it, it doesn't let turn skip cards exist, which is good. And then Beatrice Lady of the Eternal, I think we all knew that card was going away. It definitely weakens the rank 6 pool. I saw a lot of people calling for Wave High King Caesar, but I think Lacrima is honestly the better hit. Uh, because it allows things like the Unchained Package to still have goals. And it allows the Fiendsmith Package to still have goals. Uh, there are other cards that you can use uh, in the rank 6 pool. Things like uh, Pilgrim Reaper, for example, are really good choices. Uh, but these four hits are really good. I think these four hits are great. Uh, I have one issue with it, and uh, we'll get to that when we get to the limited section. In the limited section, we have Eva, so that's nice. Uh, Eva coming back to 1 allows things decks like Drytron to have uh, more plays, which is always a good thing. Uh, it just it allows other decks to be stronger. Snake Eye Ash and Snake Eye Poplar to one doesn't do anything. It makes it slightly less consistent, but we still run four copies of Ash and four copies of Poplar, five copies of Poplar actually, um, in the Snake Eye deck. If anything, it's giving the deck more space to play interruptions and, and uh, cards that work well against other decks. Because Flamberge is still around, Flamberge is strong enough on its own to fix the problems of the deck. Do I think Snake Eye is the best deck of the format? No. No, I don't. I think it's probably one of the top four. I think it's definitely in the top four still. I don't think it did anything, and we were in a tier zero format. So here's my issue with the ban list. Snake Eye's not really getting hit effectively when we've had, what, three tier, near tier zero decks uh, that have dealt with Massacres. For example, we had uh, Tier Limit, which had three limits and a ban, and it made the deck rogue at best. We had Kashtira, which we all know I did not enjoy that deck, but they banned their boss monster and did other limits to mitigate its strength. We had, uh, we've, we've had a couple of Tier 0 decks, or high Tier 1, really strong decks, that got massacred, and this deck got basically two ban lists of you're free to go so yeah that that fundamentally bothers me but that being said these limits could matter as you know ashing ash could really hurt or you know drolling ash could kill the deck completely uh it really does and without apollosa yeah it loses to nibiru a lot harder which is always a good thing uh the number 40 number c40 gimmick puppet of strings and dark strings uh them being limited just makes it a little harder to pull off the FTK, but I don't think it stops the FTK. We'll see. That deck was losing favorability to begin with, so whatever. Brand of Fusion going to one. I think banning Sanctifier Dragon solved the problem. I think limiting Branded Fusion just makes the deck almost, like, almost unplayable. It's completely playable still, obviously, um, but you have to play more supplemental engines, or you have to play it at perfect 40, and you leave no room for 
You, you have to play perfectly at all times, basically. It really hurt the deck. It took a very fun, very accessible Tier 1 deck and basically neutered it. Uh, opening of the Spirit Gates, I talked about this. This card going to 1 makes perfect sense. I think this card's a lot more important than people think in Ubel uh, because it can reset things like Nightmare Pain, because it can reset... Uh, it can resummon back basically the whole Ubel deck. Um, opening the Spirit Gates going to 1 is a big hit. Pot of Prosperity. Um, look, I... I called this. Um, a few people have called this. Sitting and summoning going to one, I think we all saw coming. Yeah, you bet. Uh, Tempai Dragon. Tempai Dragon is just... That card is silly. And Tempai Dragon walking away basically unscathed. I don't foresee it not getting hit again in the future. Uh, but this is fine. That grass looks greener. Is back at one. I don't know how I feel about this card being at one. Um, I know how the community feels about it because the card shot up to like $40 a copy, but I don't know how I feel about it as a one-of. With things like Thrust in the format, it's four copies of it. So if there's a deck that can force effects to add this to hand with Thrust, which there are, we'll see. And then Skill Drain going to one. I would have preferred it banned, but whatever. Uh, it going to one is fine. All right, semi-limited. Blaster, Redox, Tempest, and Tidal all are, are all at two. Well... Dragon Rulers be back, baby. Uh, and I don't think they're going to do much. Um, I think the game has evolved past them. Lunalite Tiger coming to two is a good thing. It's always a good thing. Like, at this point, you could play Lunalite Orcus if you really wanted to. It's completely viable again. Uh, I just don't think it's the right play. Uh, Thunder Dragon Colossus is at two. Uh, Danger Thunder is basically back online. And then Ib, the World Chalice Justicar, it's back. It's fine. Finally, the unlimited section. These cards are back at full strength. So Armageddon Knight, Red Rose Dragon. I wasn't, I mean, this wasn't on the bingo card. Red Rose Dragon wasn't even on my list. Armageddon Knight makes sense, I guess. Uh, Magist Magispector Unicorn Kieran. Uh, I, welcome back. You've been power crept. Perform H Plush Fire. The current iteration is legal until the reprint happens with the errata. Whatever. Uh, Ancient Fairy Dragon is back at 3 with its errata. It hasn't even seen play. Uh, Denglong is back at 3. That's fine. And Time Seal is at 3. and Still not going to do anything. So that's the ban list. So what are my takeaways? Well, Ubel is the best deck. Um, I don't think that that's debatable. We have Phantom of Ubel at 3 still, uh, which is not once per turn to make. We still have access to the entirety of the Fiendsmith package for the rank 6 pools. And the access to Wave High King Caesar. Um, we still have access to the Unchained package in the deck, so it's got some really good uh, and explosive like combo potential. Yeah, I, I don't think Ubel took the hit that everybody thinks it did. Ubel was very, basically untouched, which is kind of what I predicted anyway. I didn't think Ubel was going to be hit that hard, but that's just my opinion on Ubel. Uh, the second best deck is probably Tempai Dragon or... Ritual Beasts, um, Protoss is untouched. Uh, Ritual Beast has some really good consistency cards and is able to play things like Dimension Shifter, as is Tempai Dragon. The problem here for Dimension Shifter is that Ubel is actually pretty efficient under it. The only part of the Ubel deck that doesn't like Dimension Shifter is the Fiendsmith package, and the deck can play around, like, to play around it, you can just side the Fiendsmith package and main deck the Unchains. They don't care. And now you've put whoever you're playing against, Tempai or whatever, you're in a great spot. So I think Ubel is clearly the best deck. I think Tempai and Ritual Beasts are good options. I think Snake Eye is still completely playable. Uh, I, I, actually, I, it's 100% still playable. So yeah, that's that's my take on the top four. Uh, I don't think enough really happened to Snake Eye to take it out of number one or in the in top four, like one of the four best decks. So that's like that's kind of the the issue here is that it didn't do anything at all at all. Um, Prosper going to one is a good thing. We'll see what happens in the coming months. But if I was a betting person, I'd expect to see a lot of you bell, just a lot of it, just everywhere at all times. It's gonna be great. I don't know 
what else to say? The only deck you're going to have to prepare less for is probably Branded. Uh, and with Branded out of the format, it allows another deck to come out of the woodwork that we haven't seen in a while. Uh, because I think that Branded had a really good matchup at keeping that deck out of the... Just out. Which is Flawanderies. Um, I think we could see a lot more flu coming back. Because it's fine. Like, it is completely playable. Uh, I think Branded helped keep it at bay just due to how Branded plays. Keeping them from being able to do things. So that's my take on this ban list is I don't think it really did anything. Um, I think Konami um, kept us on the edge of our seats for an entire month and really, really let us down. I don't agree, like I don't like this ban list. I wanted it to go new. I wanted it to be as many hits, if not more, uh, than what we got. Like I, I felt like the number of cards that were moved around on the list was like a good amount, if not maybe a little light. But it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough banned cards that made the power level of the game go from eight thousand miles a second to you know now we're at seventy five hundred. It doesn't. That doesn't. At that speed, you just nothing feels different. You know what I mean? So like that's where we're at. Is it just doesn't change enough to allow the game to catch its breath? Yeah, I really am not a fan of of this ban list, but. As I always will, I will make it fun. I will have some fun with it. I have a couple of lists already solved. So yeah, that's my take on the ban list. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. It just, it wasn't enough. It, the game has basically gone unchanged. It's gotten changes, but it really doesn't feel like it's changed. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Am I doom and glooming? Maybe. I mean, I hope I'm wrong, but that's what it feels like right now. Until next time, lads, good fun. Have luck. And we'll see you next time with some more fun.